Four workbooks have been written to accompany the basic math series. Books one and two are now available. For more information, please write to Oliver and Boyd, 1 to 3 Baxter's Place, Edinburgh EH1 3BB. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present for you today a little act which we have entitled Puzzle Projections. My lovely assistant, the gorgeous and glamorous Rini here, isn't she marvelous, will step behind this screen and will produce for you certain ordinary everyday objects. And you and I have to guess what these objects are. Th thank, thank you, Rini. Uh, thank you, Rini. Well, if you will kindly step behind the screen, don't forget you and I have to guess what the objects are as she uh, quickly and deftly nips behind the screen. Get your thinking caps on, and are you ready for the first object? And the first one, please, really, is... The first object is a, a square thing. Um, it's, it's a book. It's, uh, yes, uh, it's a fat book, a very fat book with nails in it, and you blow it a lot. And, yes, and the next object, the next object, please, is... It's uh, a little effort. No, it's, it's a pencil, a fat... Uh, it's a bent pencil for writing around corners and stuffing in your mouth. Thank you. And the next object, please, the next object is a... Uh, it's an egg. Of course, it's an egg. Uh, an egg, a funny shaped egg that you shake about a bit. Yes, and the next one, please. The next object is a little, a little thing, a very tiny, it's pipe. No, it's got a hole in it. It's a thing with a hole in it, and, ah, it goes like that. Thank you, and the next one, please. I hope you're playing this at home. The next object, it's, it's another egg. It's a ball. It's a ball with a uh, spike on the bottom. And uh, it's, it's a big nail. And, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, really. That was the final object. Now, how many of those did you get, I wonder? Well, the gorgeous, the glamorous, the ever-lovely Rini is going to step now behind, from behind the, uh, the screen with her tray load of goodies and we'll find out if you got them right. The first object really was, yes, of course, it was the big fat book with the nails in, the b birthday cake, uh, the birthday cake, I'm sure you got that one. And then, of course, there was the bent thing, like, uh, uh, writing around corners, uh, uh, the, the, sa the sand sandwich, sandwich, I hope you got that too. Yes, so did I. And, and then, of course, there was the egg, the wobbly, the, the jelly, the jelly in the jelly mold, the jelly, the jelly mold, of course. And then, of course, there was the, uh, the round thing uh, that you, you sort of... <coughs> yes, the party blower, isn't she a cherub? And then there was the, uh, the final object. Uh, uh, what was the final object? Uh, would you let me have it, please, Rini? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Now, this is going to be a pop-up, the sort of thing you get in pop-up books. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it's not too bad. It needs a good crease. If you make one of these, it's best to start off with a piece of squared cardboard, like this, mark your design on it, and then cut it out and do the folds. Now, if you cut with a, a knife, like this one, then do make sure you've got an old board or something underneath. Otherwise, you'll make an awful mess of the table and you won't be very popular. Oh, and mind your fingers. Right. That's all right so far. Now, there's a piece to go on the front. A tower. Stick it on. Oh, that seems to hold all right. But, of course, there's still lots of holes everywhere, you see, through there. So, I've made a backing piece here that'll hide them a bit. Pop that on. Some sticky pads there and there. Let's see how that holds. It's a castle, you see. There's the outside. Battlements across the top and a door down here. And there's the inside. One portable fold-away castle. Did you have a go at making patterns like these using squares? This one's got squares overlapping. And this one's made by using squares that go smaller and smaller and turning them inside each other. I've got some more patterns here. Only these are really puzzles. And what you have to try and do is to draw the shape without taking the pen from the paper. So let's have a look. Let's start here, I think. And uh, there. Oh. Well, that's no good, because I'll have to go back over myself. Let's see what happens if I start here. And there. And up here, I think. Along. Yes. And along there. We've done it. There's another one here. I mean, this one looks a bit more complicated. I'll start in the same place, I think, because that worked last time. Take it down there, there, up here, along, down, on there. I've done it. <laughs> There's lots of stories built around patterns like these, using one continuous line, and this one's from East Africa. Once upon a time, the son went on a walk to visit God. God gave the son a cockerel as a present. Keep the cockerel, said God. But in return, you must promise to come and see me every morning. The son kept his promise, which is why he circles the earth returning each morning, only to disappear at evening time. The moon also went to visit God. God gave the moon a cockerel as a present. Keep it, said God, but you must promise, if you do, to come back and visit me every evening. The moon kept her promise, which is why she circles the earth, returning every evening and disappearing again at morning time. Man, in his turn, went to visit God. God gave man a cockerel as a present. But man was hungry and killed the cockerel at once and ate it. That's all right, said God. But because you have done this, one day you will have to return to me and never leave me. In the drawing, this symbol here represents God. And this one down here, man. This the sun. And this one here, the moon. And all four are tied together by the pattern which is a line drawn without taking the pen from the paper. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. 
Did you know that all disco rhythms have got a basic count of two? One, two, one, two. But the drummer usually dresses it up a bit, like this. Here's another way of counting in twos. Ah, got it. It's easy. It's doubled equals, isn't it? Yes, it is. One doubled is two, two doubled is four, four doubled is eight. Yeah. Oh, look, here's another one. Three doubled is six, six doubled is twelve. Here's another one. Seven doubled is fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. Ah, and five doubled... Ten. Yeah. Um, Are there any more? Can't see any. Oh, look here. Nine doubles is eighteen. Oh, well, if you can write them in, <laughs> there's no stopping you. Um, five, uh, that would be ten. Oh, no, no that's hang on. not that's, right. That's the wrong way around, isn't it? Uh, ah, it's got to be... Two and a half. Oh, Double no. is five. We can't have that for it. Why not? Well, because we're dealing in whole numbers, not halves. Oh, all right. Uh, well, this is one, though. Look here. Ten doubled is twenty. Yes, no stopping you now. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Our twenty doubled is forty. We're going to run out of space in a minute. Yes. Um, how about thirteen doubled? Uh, is... Twenty. Six. Six. 